let's start by going all the way back to when you came to City in the summer of 2016. In terms of the culture, the mentality, what kind of a football club did you did you find when you came here? I would say quite similar, like uh, like uh, he's right now. So I took a team like uh, years before, won the Premier League already, and uh, I revived the excitement and the illusion to do a good job here. So you, you laid the foundations yeah. in, in your first season, and then the following season we get 100 points. It's a new football record, most points ever recorded, most goals, most wins. I could go on with the records. Did that even take you by surprise, how well we did and how quickly you turned the team into a team that can get 100 points? Yeah, absolutely. We didn't expect to make 100 points. It's a lot. So it's true that this was the first season, I think, in my period here that we make the pre-season all together. We arrive in the same time and we could work since day one for the new players, Kyle and 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 Eddie and, and okay, all the players come from the, the, the second season. We we felt that for the beginning was something like, wow, uh, we, we can do a good, good season. But of course it wasn't expected, we expected absolutely to achieve what the, or the way we achieve. You mentioned Carl Walker uh, specifically there. He feels to me like a, a player who was incredibly important in terms of changing our style because he can get up and down. He's got so much pace and so much energy. How important has Kyle been in kind of turning City into a winning winning team? Of course, Kyle, his energy, his physicality to win the duels about the important winners in the Premier League all around the world. You have to, in these leagues, you have to sustain, you know, players like like they are incredible good and Kyle with that is no no doubt about that. He's a an incredible love player in the in the locker room because he's so funny and always is generous and always been, you know, talking with everyone. And when he's like this and focusing in, in football and enjoying what he likes, Kyle is an exceptional, an exceptional player. We finished that season by beating Southampton. We get a hundred points, Gabriel Jesus scores the final goal. You seem to be very, very excited at the end of this game, even though the, the title was wrapped up long before. Mm. Records important to you, getting that 100 points really meant something. Yeah, listen, we have a record will be broken. So records all the time will be broken, but... Even 100 uh, we, points? Yeah, I think it's not easy. <laughs> I would say it's not easy, but uh, why not? If we have done you 100 points, another team can do it. Yeah. So. You know, that, that, that is, doesn't mean they're not doing it. The, the problem is that we play when we were champion for, for uh, you know, five or six or seven fixtures before, you know, to play for something. You know, you have to play for something, for the target. Otherwise, the, the four or five less games, left games will be boring. And you have, um, you know, we, we push ourselves to say, okay, the goals, the goals concede, the victories at home, away. And of course, 100 points is a good milestone, you know, because it's three numbers and Nice. Never had done it before, and it's nice to have it. So, but but I'm pretty sure one day maybe one will you know they will overcome and they will do it. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they have to do it really well because to achieve it is is many many games, many victories, a lot a lot of things. In that Southampton game, Phil Foden came on, which meant that he could get a Premier League medal, and he became the youngest ever winner of the Premier League. You were getting a little bit of criticism at that time for not playing in more, but you had a plan for Phil at that point. And it and it's worked perfectly. Hasn't well, it? we saw we saw from the beginning that he was talent. He is a special talent. He is, and uh, and and uh, and we, we thought from the beginning this guy cannot be alone. Can be with us because training with David Silva, training with uh, Vincent, with uh, all all the players of Sergio, with all the players with a lot of experience uh, that have done the guy will help him to his development. And uh, yeah, he was no, no patient because the guy immediately was involved playing the minutes and now is a reality. We feel he could end up being City's greatest ever player or one of City's greatest ever players. Does he feel that pressure, do you think? Well, Phil, I think, handled the pressure. If he's still enjoying playing football, he has to feel that he can improve. Uh, in his career will be up and down, that's for sure. Because football always is up and down. Not all career will be winning Premier League, Premier League being top. 
but if he still remains the passion that he has to play in football, to enjoy with the ball, to every time he has the ball, you see his eyes, how bright they are. When that's going to happen, Phil always will be there. And in the future, when he will retire, we will see what he has done, but absolutely belongs to him. The year after the 100 points, um, we won the league, but it was a lot tighter. We won by 19 the year before, then it was just you know a point here and there because Liverpool emerged. We had to win 14 games hmm. on the bounce. Now, as a fan, that took a lot out of me. For you, how does it feel when you've been pushed? Well, it was really nice because we knew it. Uh, Liverpool knew it. I think we knew it that uh, we should we have to win and win every every game to be to be champion. So. Uh, with this right, yeah. And but you know, at the end it's nice because you, you are there and said, We have to win, okay. So no alternative. At the end it's easy to prepare mentally. So guys, but they it's not worse. It's not telling, oh, we have to win because Liverpool is going to win. They knew it because we faced them and Liverpool knew it that they have to win the games too to be champion. It happened that year and uh, yeah, that's the that season, the twenty one, twenty two. Uh but the last one we won that it was the same. Uh, you have to win many, many games to be champion, and, and it happened in the last, in the last, in the last, you know, fourteen or eleven or twelve. That's do it what we have done. And this was a special day at Brighton. Brighton yeah, were very, allowed us to basically have a party in their stadium. That was a very, very nice day for everybody. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was really good, and especially when we conceded the first goal, and after we were lucky that we equalized quick with Sergio, and uh, and after. Um, uh, I may make the second one, and in the beginning, the second half, we, we had the game in our control, and I had the feeling after making the third or fourth, I think, quick, and we could enjoy the last 50, 20 minutes already, feeling that we, we were champion again. We then win the FA Cup. Um, for you, I mean, I'm sure you loved both, but which is a bigger achievement, 100 points in the Premier League or winning all four English trophies in a single season? No, the four titles, four titles in one season yeah. was nice. When we put it in perspective, you know, people say, ah, it's normal, it's a good team. When we put it in perspective is, is that we have done an incredible good job in, in these years. In these years of many, many trophies and many competitions and all, all the time being there, being there. That's why they are huge competitors, this group of players. In this generation, the players we are together are huge, huge competitors. And uh, every game, they take it like a, like a, okay, they, they are not happy when they don't lose. That's why, you know how difficult it is in this country to make back-to-back, -back. and we did it twice. So it's the respect and the credit I have for these players is beyond, beyond respect. Coming out on top again, Manchester City! Manchester City are Carabao Cup winners! The 2019 season is capped off with victory in the FA Cup final. The season after was Covid disrupted, very, very mm. difficult. We won the League Cup, um, the Carabao Cup, but not uh, the Premier League. Do you, do you kind of learn more about your players sometimes when, when maybe you don't win the big titles and you see the disappointment and how they handle that disappointment? We are started a little bit slow, flat, and Liverpool started big and strong mm. after being Champions League winners. And, uh, and we could not, uh, we could not get them. So they, they were better. So, so no discussions. Like when we were 100 points, we were better. They were better. But the sign is when we were back to back winners, we go, we don't win. And after you can drop more and drop more and drop more. And the next season we won again. Yeah. And in this period, it was a period that adapted everyone in all around the world. So we adapt our lives uh, incredibly, incredibly differently. Yeah. What about Ruben Diaz? Because he came in ahead of the next season. Now we speak to people who work in our, you know, in your backroom team, and they say his professionalism is mm. through the roof. How have you found working with with Ruben and the way he applies himself every single day, the way he lives his life? Yeah, I think his impact with all of us was great. And like you say, he lives twenty four hours in his profession, 
he put a lot of pressure on him, him himself. Now is the first time that they make a little set setback for the fact for the injuries were never had. He has to learn about his body, what he has to do to avoid to get injured. You know, uh, sometimes you have to do a little bit less to be more effective than more. But it's a process, normal process that his body is going to change. It's different to play in Portugal, uh, playing the. In, in, I guess, here in England, and the huge amount of games, the competitivity, and uh, the demanding for many, many things. But uh, the impact uh, we had with him and, and his character, and how he loves being defender. Being a good defender is a huge, huge talent. The people say, no, the strikers, the, the wingers, oh, how talent play, how skills. Being a good defender, defend well, is one of the things I value the most for, for the players, because this is to have a, a big, big talent, and Ruben is one of them. And then obviously after the COVID period, we, we win the game uh, against Everton to lift the trophy for the third time in, in, in four seasons. With 10,000 fans at the Etihad Stadium, OK, the stadium's not full, but that's a, that's a very meaningful day, isn't it? Yeah, it was nice. It was that league. It was winning also for a big margin before against, against United, I think so. Yeah. And uh, and in that moment, you know, where our focus was was in uh, you know the preparation for the, the final Champions League that unfortunately we could not win, and win again the Premier League after didn't win it the, the year before was was so nice. So what about that Champions League final then? Do you do you look back on that? Do you have any any regrets? Anything you would change? Why do you think we didn't get going that night in the in the way that we we know we can do? The regrets, always there are regrets in life, but. The decision had been made in the right moment, the right tempo, and before it's going to happen. It's easy to say, yeah, we have done. Because now thinking, oh, I could have differently with this player, or have done differently in the tactic aspect, to the preparations the day before, or whatever in the past. Not even in these changes can assure you it would going well. Nobody knows. So the decision be made because what I felt for the, what I want to play for the, for the conditions for the players and, and this was the, yeah, done. But even that, that we lost the Champions League final. So I have incredible good memories for that competition because in 13 games we won 11, we draw one, and fortunately we lose just one in the final. The competition was beyond exceptional what we, we have done. And, um, and be a runners up, you know, the Champions League final is incredible success from my point of view. So. Being there was uh, was an honor for Manchester City, and uh, this season we were close to 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 arrive again, and we're going to try this season again. So we move on to to the season that's just passed. I've got two goals here that I think sum up two different ways that that City can play. The first one here is a game where we went to Old Trafford, we've got 69% possession, which mm. is incredible. And we score a goal with uh, 26 passes. How do you as a coach get your players to love the ball and appreciate possession of the ball so much? Well, the other players, that's the first, and have a concept idea to play. So in this image, I start, the first is when Cristiano lose the ball, we had six players run backwards like an animal to recover the ball. This is one aspect that the people see these passes, but there are a lot. And and in this situation you can do it because maybe United is more passive than 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 usual or should be. But of course the quality to lose the ball under pressure, to be patient in the right moment, this action from Bernardo right now, to have the quality to do it and be the right tempo, the right tempo. Well, we won't attack in two, three passes, but sometimes you need more. You know, to move the opponent, to move the structure, to be the players in the position, and everyone be in the position, especially in the final third, and in the right moment, attack what you have to do. But, you know, at the end, every player has the, the ball, they have the quality, don't lose the ball. This is what we are we are looking for. So, and yeah, from the day one, we try to, to try to, you know, to score a lot goals through the you know intensity without the ball in the right moment attack and the quality of Bernardo the quality from Joao at the end make the difference do you see the players score goals like that on the training field all the time but, well we don't we don't I, I would say yeah but yes they surprise me they are too good they are so good and <laughs> they surprise me sometimes not in in this situation but they yeah they have players with a lot of skills and of course do it in ultra for 
it's not, they are good. <laughs> like, what, what can I say? Every weekend, I think all the all the people can watch how good the players they are. Yeah, and a goal like that makes you look good, doesn't it? As a coach, when your players can do that. I didn't do one pass for me. I didn't cross like Joao. I didn't make a goal like Bernardo. So always I have to. We are here, the managers, to to bring an idea in all of us and try to execute this idea as fast as possible. No, no more secrets than that. But I never scored a goal in my life as a manager. How do you, as a leader, how do you create an environment like that where not only your players but your backroom staff, the kit guys, everybody is pulling in the same direction and wants to help? you, Pep, they want to help the team and the club achieve everything. How do you create that environment? So I don't know, I think the club has the environment itself, not just me. I would say so presumptuous to say I, I bring, what I try to bring is my idea of football to do it, like the team is above for everyone, like everyone is so important, but you know, everyone can be replaced. Uh, and, and feel that uh, we are something that do it together and, and being together, and the way we want to play football, like is everybody involved in the way we defend and everybody involved in the way we attack from the keeper until the last winger and defending the first winger until the keeper. When everyone is involved, everyone feels part of that. Yeah. And we don't play everything. We have to do something for him. Okay, or I do something for the other one. No, everyone to do everything for all of us. Yeah. And sometimes when the way you play is the way the same, the way you live. And, and that's why sometimes it's easier. And the other aspect important of that when you create the environment is because they are nice guys. Yeah. So it's better to have a, a healthy people, a nice people, than 100,000 of tactics boards on meetings. So in generally, all these seven years here together, uh, we had an incredible group of people, the staff of course, and backroom staff, absolutely. This goal um, against Aston Villa is totally different to the one we've just seen. It's a counter-attack, mm -hmm. it's done with lightning speed. Mm -hmm. Does this make you as happy as the goal we've just watched against United? No, but listen, you cannot use a counter-attack when the teams, they won't attack you. And when the teams attack you, when these actions from Aston Villa, like um, Stephen Gerrard want to do it, you can use the counter-attack and yeah, we can do it. Football is not just playing a counter-attack or play in one way, so football is set pieces, is, uh, is many, many, many things. You can play in, as much you can play in different things, it's perfect. So this is again, the cross from Gabi and the execution for Bernardo and the pass before for Fernandinho, I think so, to Gabi. So it's always we, we go in the same place. It's about the talent of these players. So. The people can figure out and make a lot of histories about all the tactics. Of Look the cross from Gabi and the execution from Gabriel. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm involved in that? Tell me, I'm involved? <laughs> no, that's I'm not with a <laughs> at home to guide him. So they have quality and that's why they we won what we have done this, this last season. That's why the work from Chiki, the, the financial aspects from Ferran, the control for all the club being there, okay. Help, help us, not just me, help us a lot to, to, to have the team that we have. I wanted to just focus quickly on Kevin De Bruyne as well. I mean, there was a performance against Wolves, which for me was a masterclass. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never, he's, he's played so many great games mm -hmm. and this was a, another level. Mm -hmm. The quality that he has, um, is he the best central midfielder in, in world football right now, do you think? Mm. I would say, I would say maybe, yeah. I think I'm, I'm so happy. I think is the is the last player right now still is here since since when when we we arrived. Uh, in this year, especially this year, the last part he scored a lot of goals. Yeah. He was involved not just in the assists. Assist is the quality that he has, in, especially in the goals, and in important moments, especially in the Premier League, was was a was a key player. I think is more mature. And he has incredible confidence. He understands the game perfectly right now, much, much better. And this goal, for example, the quality he ex executed the goal, he, he proved, you know, how, how important, how important it is. I think he feels now himself a better, better player. He will not admit it because he's so shy. With this amount of quality player, how humble it is, how educated it is, how calm it is. Calm. It's not, 
he doesn't want to pretend, you know, outside or inside to be something different than what he is. And normally the biggest, biggest, but the biggest players are more like these than the normal players that they believe they are a masters. And I like to work with the nice people like, like Kevin, like being a, a top class player could behave completely differently for the quality that he has. And he's completely different. He's a normal guy, like he likes to be the normal things and enjoy, enjoy playing football. Kevin De Bruyne, first time shot. And a first goal for Manchester City Sterling. It's come back out to be driven home by KDB. It comes KDB, there's the hat trick. Foden, selfless there, but Kevin De Bruyne is on hand to score his fourth. We're going to come to the uh, the final game of the of the season, Aston Villa. Have you watched this back since? Because obviously it was an incredibly emotional day. Certainly an incredible five minutes. <sighs> they have so fresh that game and everything happened. Yeah. And the uh, environment and the team, or, or or going to the with the bus to the to the to the stadium, and see and see the the crowd and everything. I had the feeling that we need one goal, we need one goal. Even with 0-0, zero, 0-1, zero, 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 2 we need one goal. It, it's true that with 0-2, it was 75 minutes, so oh, God, we had to score quick, otherwise couldn't do it. The impact from Alex was incredible in the second half, incredible in the left side. He helped us to to be more fluid in, in our attack. And after we after the first goal, the people, you know, the emotions that we knew what we are fighting or looking for in that moment. There is no tactics. There are not absolutely anything. That is, guys, have to win that game. And it was nice to prove you we can score the three goals in a, in a, in five game in five minutes like normally we are not used to. And and it was nice because the previous seasons we won all before we won away in Brighton, but at home in the last game in the way would happen. Like if not for zero five zero, I would have preferred definitely. But after zero two, for the incredible effort from Aston Villa, defending uh, really well and using the pace of the counter attack, what they have in that moment, uh, winning that way, I think was the the most most special one, yeah. definitely incredible. And your emotion at the end, you were incredibly emotional. Is that a result of? the pressure throughout the season because yeah, you, yeah. in my opinion, you carry the weight of expectation from Manchester City fans, Manchester City players, Caldoun, Ferran, Cheeky, me, everyone here. That's That must be a big burden for you to carry for 10 months, day in, day out. Is yeah, this is course. this just you, emotion pouring out at the end of that? Yeah, of course, it's for the fact of winning here. I'm coming up to, to see my family in the stands. It's not just to win in that moment. It's because there's a point in Madrid and the tough battle in Atletico Madrid. The 13 games or 12 games you have to win to beat Liverpool. You know, there are many, many, many things, many aspects that in that moment said, OK, it's over. You know, I'm pretty sure I would not cry, I would not lose the, the game, would not be the Premier League. But that moment, the joy, the hack, the people you love, is a lot. You admit, no, it's not, yeah, we are well, sleeping well, we are eating well. But the last month, always, they are so, so intense. And, and the, for the players as well. So there's a point where it was really, really tough for us. How they react after, you know, the games, four or five games, winning 5-0 uh, in, in Newcastle, go to the to I think Wolves and win also we always struggle with a good game one four or one five I don't remember exactly. And you know this 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 these moments always there are twenty four hours living with the, the the tension, you know, to do it. And that moment said, Wow, we did it. And after it come and you can, you know, celebrate it with your family, with your friends. This is this is amazing. That's why it makes sense our our job. I think all the players we were there, all the people were there, we never forget. When I forget that specific five minutes, what Gundo has done with the impact on Rahim when the start, with the impact from from Alex and everyone with the ball, the way we celebrate the you know the third goal, Bernardo go from here to cross <laughs> cross the the you know the pitch to celebrate there and and all the stuff inside and you felt it and when everyone push push in that way at the end. At the end, uh, you know, the good moments always come. It was an amazing day. You mentioned there uh, Alex Inchenko, Raheem Sterling and Gabriel Jesus all played a very big part that day. Mm. How difficult as a manager 
is it to take the decision to allow players like that who have had so much of a contribution to leave the football club? Yeah, they are part of the decisions of the club, but they're the decisions for the, for the players. I said many times for day one arrive, here has to be, we want to be, if yeah. they want to be, uh, it's different. Only I can say that with uh, Raheem, with Gabriel, with Alex, is, uh, every, all we have done this season without them would have not been possible. Yeah. So Raheem has been the pace and how he helped us to, to make, we had a team like uh, all the passes here in the feet, in the control, and he made this explosion this something incredible, unpredictable. His runners in the right and left can play in the three positions up front. His ambition, I, I, I saw him how grew up in his ambition to score goals, to make an assist and more hungry and, and more in a good terms, in good words, selfish to say, I want more goals, I want more there. His ambition to do it um, has been, uh, the, I would say not just the numbers. So the impact for the way he played in, 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 and he's a guy who can play every three days. He was never get injured. Uh, was, was top, was top. Alex arrived as a boy, you know, coming from Ukraine and, and there. And, and, um, he went loan to, to Holland and come back and we want to loan him again. We want to sell him again. I said, no, uh, uh, I want to stay here. I want to sell him. I want to loan him in the first season. I said, no, no, no. And he was in the gym when everyone was sleeping and making extra training session when the training session was over. And, and I said, my time will come, my time will come. And his time came and he was there and he was ready. And, uh, and he played incredible well. He's a top class player and uh, yeah, we will miss him a lot. Because he's a he's, uh, of course he's a fighter, it doesn't look like, because he was a number 10 and I was feeling on a left back. And when you are number 10 and that a left back and you end up really well, like Fabian Delf has done in the, in the first season, being attacking midfielder and playing that, in that role, um, it's because you are so generous, because you are so clean here, it's because you want to be here, you want to fight and you'll be here. And when that's happened, it's with another important thing from Alex is, uh, is a guy like showing the last game, his official game with here, his impact in the second half, like change our dynamic to attack and attack much, much better. He's a guy, he can handle the pressure incredibly well. He's a, he forget the mistakes immediately, immediately, and is focusing the next one. He have incredible self-confidence in himself. And this is so brave. And Gabriel maybe is the nicest person I ever, I ever worked with. Uh, it was a, a, a huge task to be alongside to compete with uh, the legend of this club, is Sergio Aguero. Gabriel, a young, young the player from Brazil, came to compete with him. And he was all the time ready to accept everything. He's the best striker defender ever, I ever, I ever found and play in the three positions. He can play five minutes, he played the best five minutes of his life. He played 90 minutes, he will give everything. The last game, he was devastated what he ran. He can press three or four players during 10, 50 seconds, during 90 minutes um, uh, in every single game. And is, uh, yeah, I had a feeling that the um, most cases uh, we, will miss, we will miss them, but it's football, it's life. And the successes, all of them will be our happiness. So hopefully they can enjoy in, in Chelsea, Raheem, and, and Arsenal, Alex, and, 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 and Gabriel, and, and I'm pretty sure the USA dropped. So what we have done these seasons, uh, everyone, everyone was involved, important, and all three was. So it was a privilege for me to, to be their manager, um, and, and, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, 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 to have these players in this, in the last six, seven seasons we were together. I think the fans are incredibly excited about having Erling Haaland and Julian Alvarez, two um, you know, forward strikers. Is that, is that exciting for you to, because it's going to change slightly maybe the way that we play. Are you, as a manager, are you no. excited by that prospect? No, we're not going to change the way we play. We're going to adapt the quality of these players they have to be involved in the way we played. But we're not going to play the way we should play when the, we did really, really quite well this, this last season. But we want Erling, Julian, Julian and, and and Calvin and of course Stefan 
uh, we want we want them the best of them, the best version of them, adapting what you want to play. And I'm pretty sure it's happened because it's just a few days together. But the feeling is is really good for all of them. Really, really good. Do you feel like you've fallen in love with Manchester City over the last few years that you've been here? I've been I've been since day one. Incredibly comfortable for all the partners in the club and for the hierarchy, of course, but especially working with these players, of course. What can I say for the people in the street or in the stadium, how to take care of me and my family? So, is a, yeah, that's why I'm, it's the seventh season here and expecting when we arrive, apart because I'm comfortable and importantly because we won a lot. And when you won a lot, that helps to continue because this club right now, I'm sorry for the future, the standards are there. Yeah. And all of us, we have to fight to maintain it there. The people, our fans don't live for the memories. The memories don't live. It's so nice, we enjoy it against Aston Villa, but this season our fans want more. They are hungry to see a good football games and enjoy that. I'm pretty sure the fans want to win the Premier, but they want it every weekend. We want to attend the stadium or our fans when we're away, they are exceptional every time we go away. They want to see the team, you know, playing good, enjoying and represent our club as best as possible. And this is our, our target. This is going to do. Well, it's 11 trophies, including four Premier League titles in five years. It's an amazing record. We think you're the best manager in the world, Pep. We've loved every minute of it. And uh, we just want to thank you very much for the amazing football, the yeah. success and the the mentality and, and, and the way that the, the business now operates. We feel like it's been fantastic. Thank so you, thank Rob. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Rob. We'll try to do it again. <laughs>